G'day and welcome to Going Four Wall Drive. I'm Ian Johnston and today we're going to take you up through Murrindindi State Forest which is an hour and a half from Melbourne and 20 minutes from Yarra Glen. We're going to head up to Cheviot Tunnel which is an old railway tunnel that was built back in the 1880s. But we're stopping off at Murrindindi Cascades. There's a lot of water running through the river so we've been told and being such a hot day as it is we're going to stop there and have lunch and cool off for a while. But the tracks today are nice and easy, not long bulldozed, and any all-wheel drive with good ground clearance and any four-wheel drive can do the tracks that we're doing today. As I said, nice easy trip, so let's jump in the cars and let's go and have a great day of four-wheel driving. It's obviously a good little track this. Probably not that long bulldozed actually, it looks pretty smooth. It's in real good condition, so we've let down our tyres. Anyone who's seen these before know that I sort of let mine down to 26. Don't go too low because it still gives me some ground clearance and if I really do have to let them down later on I've still got some left. It is a seasonal closure. From June till the end of October. Big gate there to lock everyone out. Not bad, all the bushfires are raging up in the high country this weekend and we're inundated with smoke here. It's that much smoke that the sun's just an orange ball in the sky. It's, it's not able to shine through. Uh, that's keeping the temperature down for us at the moment and there's absolutely no wind. Nice whoop de doo Getting bigger. Oh, Tobo hit. Do. And up this Rouch's roads a nice little track. There'd be a couple of bog holes in these corners here in the wet, I'm sure. Still a bit of water in that one there. Oh and now we've got a bit of a, a bit of a climb here. Definitely very slippery in the wet coming out of this. Oh. No rock in it, just orange clay. Just in first gear, high range here. Nothing, nothing too hard. Whoop, except for that rock there. Hmm, well, looks like the day hasn't been up this section. Nice and grassy. Okay, we've got a couple of ob obstacles we've got to clear here. I've got this tree I'll try and drive over. Then we've got a bigger one just down the track a bit more. But uh, I'll have to go around. When approaching a tree across the track, always try and get the vehicle square onto it for crossing. Otherwise the dip will catch on the tree before the wheels do. So if you have it square on, the wheels will catch first, crawl itself over and all's well. Straight, 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 straight. Straight, no, other way. 
Okay, left hand down. 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 Full walk. Full walk. Full walk. Keep coming. 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 Beautiful. Back. Hold it, no, right, left, right hand. Hang on, hang on. Against the tray. Yeah, that's, that's it, keep on that angle. Alright, pull off now. Plenty of room this end. Now well, this is bottle path spur whoops, spur track. We've got a bit of a tight squeeze through a, a cut fallen tree there. And what have we got up here? Hey, we've even got puddles in the track here. I know, it looks like the track's going to go around. With a bit of luck, yep. Oh, someone's cut a good hole through it here, and we just go up and over this one here. And down we go. Hey, don't go away. It's coming up after the break. We check out the GU with a 6.5 litre Chevy diesel in it. That's coming up next on Going Four Wheel Drive. Maxxis Tires Ultimate Control Best off-road storage systems are strong and very affordable. Ready to bolt into your four-wheel drive. Double stackers or standard two-draw units. Best off-road 03 9706 6527 Factory 3 19 to 21 Park Drive South Dandenong. GNC Communications are specialists in two-way radios, GPS navigation, marine electronics and car audio. With products like GME, Uniden, Icom, Vertex and Garmin. Call GNC Communications for the right advice and mention going four-wheel drive for a great deal. Now we've got a rig review here today with a GU Patrol behind me here. It's got a six and a half litre diesel Chevy motor in it. And Ted, this is your baby. Welcome to the show. Sure is, thanks very much. Now, what have you done to the engine itself to get it in there? Um, we had it fitted by a local uh, mechanic um, that changed engine mounts, um, basically all changed the gearbox adapter, um, fifth gear modification to the different torque ratings of the engines. Um, that's really about all. Okay, what about diff uh, ratios? Have you had to change those at all? No, they usually recommend to do that, but I've got lockers in front and back, so um, rather than do that, they change the fifth gear, which gives you a taller um, cruising highway gear. The rest of the four gears are standard. Right, and what made you go from the three litre to the six and a half litre? Um, well, I've got a car that's um, sort of decked out to what we really want, and it had no engine. The, the actual three litre engine blew. Um, and I looked at a few options, but the cheapest and best seemed to be uh, putting the Chev V8 in it. So that's what we did. So I had a car that was virtually worth nothing without the engine. Um, so I spent some money and we put the bigger engine in it. All right, that's good. Okay. Well, let's uh, lift the bonnet on this job and uh, have a good look at the motor. Well, this is a six and a half litre naturally aspirated uh, diesel V8, and. Gee, it fits in well, uh, Ted. It does, actually. There's not a lot of room to be able to do much. I don't know what they're going to do when I have to change injectors, but, it, yeah, it fits in quite well. 
Uh, well, I wouldn't be worried about changing injectors if I was you. That's a mechanic's job, and uh, <laughs> unfortunately, you'll have to pay. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I've already paid. But yeah, no, it's um, it's great. It's uh, really fun to drive off road, and uh, it's not bad on the highway either. So it's it's quite good on fuel. Yeah, Ted, I noticed that you've haven't got the standard suspension on this vehicle. What uh, suspension have you put in? No, I put a um, heavy duty suspension in because of the extra weight of the engine. It required a bit more. Um, strength at the front, um, adjustable shockers, um, just really, yeah, just better than what the standard unit was. Um, the King Springs with Coney shockers. That's good. That's a two inch lift, I take it? Uh, it is a two inch, yeah, 50 mil, yeah. Yep, yep. yep. Oh, that's Still good. to keep it road legal and, um, you know, it meets all the specifications because yep. it's all been engineered. Um, because of the engine change. So. Right, yep. yep. And uh, the rear ones, rear springs will be basically the same sort They're of setup. They're same, heavier duty, yep. but they yeah, same, same springs, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yep. All right, let's go around <coughs> to the back of the vehicle now and check out uh, what's inside. Now, Ted's got the vehicle set up for touring. He does a, a, he and his wife, his lovely wife, Peg, do a bit of touring in the outback from time to time. So they've set the vehicle up purely and simply for that. Ted? That's right. Explain what you've got here, please, mate. Oh, we've just got our normal drawers, all homemade. I actually built these myself. This is the drawer that actually keeps all the food and various bits and pieces. Um, the other drawer has all the recovery gear in it, which we hope we don't need. Um, again, all homemade. Fridge slide. Uh, we usually, if we do on the long trips, we take a freezer as well as a fridge. Um, the freezer usually sits on here, which you access once a day. So. Um, the fridge is up there, so yeah, that's that's really about it. Little nooks and crannies for storage, various bits and pieces. Um, right. little, little table on the back, just to make things easier. I was going to say, that wasn't a standard fixture <laughs> not from standard, Nissan. Not standard at all, no. It's no. very handy. Um, I suppose we use it quite a lot. Gutting fish and things like that. Oh yeah, and putting the stave on sometimes. Yep. And, yeah. Now I noticed good. too, down here you've got a, a voltmeter and an amp meter and a couple of outlets. Yes, yeah, so I actually made those and um, installed them. That's so handy. I run the fridge and uh, an inverter and various other bits and pieces off, off the outlets. Right, good one. That's great. Yeah. Now, when Ted and his lovely wife go four-wheel driving out back, Peg also does some little bit of driving to give Ted a bit of time off and have a bit of a rest. Peg, what's it like for you? Oh, it's great. It's a great opportunity to get out there and show what the girls can do. Girl power. <laughs> You've been reading, reading the website, have you? We need we need a couple of newbies and what have you for the website. Yeah, uh, and you really enjoy the, the the freedom of being able to drive. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun. It's a terrific sense of achievement when you get through these obstacles that look so challenging to begin with. That's yeah. good. Often they look worse than what they are. Often they do. Yeah, and um, what sort of stints would you drive? Would you drive mile after mile, like a couple of hundred k's at a time? Ah. Uh, when we're when we're actually out of the city, then we tend to take our time, do a couple of hundred k's a day. Right, and uh, then of course, I suppose Ted gets you to set up camp and. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's exactly how it happens. <laughs> now, when you are away, who does all the food preparation and cooking? Well, no, we share that. Um, Ted does the hot stuff near the fire. I don't like my eyebrows singed off, <laughs> and I do the rest. Okay, and. Um, the erection of the tent and everything like that, uh, does Ted do that by himself or is it a two-person job? Or uh, it's, It can be done by one person, but we share it. Yeah, it's we all, do everything we, together. We do it it's, all together. It's, yeah. it's, it's oh, that, good fun. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Thanks for being on the show, Peg. Thanks very much. And thank you very much for showing us your vehicle, Ted. No problems at all. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Oh, I tell you, this part of the track is really overgrown here. Oh, oh my God. Nice puddle on there. Take it nice and slow, you don't want to scratch too much. You've just got to keep your eyes out for those real dangerous bits. Like it's hiding in the greenery. Look at look at this. One. And a couple of nasties on here, just take it nice and slowly, try on this 
as many as we can. Oh, I've got to rip a little track off to our left there. Uh, probably won't go anywhere. It's in an old, an old logging track, I think. Oh, this is going to be a good little bit here. Came up Crotty Tracker a ways, very, very overgrown, and then we get up there and find nothing but monster trees down all over the track. So we had to do a big U-turn. and make a retreat. That GU wagon's a really nice looking touring vehicle, isn't it? And the tracks are nice and easy, as I said earlier on. Now, coming up after the break, we'll head off to Chevy Tunnel. That's on going four-wheel drive. Maxxis Tires. Ultimate Control. Best off-road storage systems are strong and very affordable. Ready to bolt into your four-wheel drive. Double stackers or standard two-drawer units. Best off-road. 03 9706 6527. Factory 3 19 to 21. Park Drive, South Dandenong. GNC Communications are specialists in two-way radios, GPS navigation, marine electronics and car audio. With products like GME, Uniden, Icom, Vertex and Garmin. Call GNC Communications for the right advice and mention going four-wheel drive for a great deal. This will get a bit boggy in the wet. Oh, talking about boggy, look at the bog hole there. Holy dolly. Not far from the bog hole, we came across this fallen tree. The logs on either side have been stacked there by other people and you can see the log has been actually attacked by somebody trying to chop it in half, but they gave up, it was just too hard for them. Well, I tried getting over this in two wheel drive, no good, so back up and have another run at it in two wheel drive and got over. Just a short walk down Murrindindi River Walk, about 200 metres or so, and you're down at the Cascades. The car park also has a picnic area with tables and barbecues and also a lovely little shelter for you. You can be like some people around, just sit on the rocks and put your feet in the water and just kick around for a little while and cool off. That's fantastic and the further you walk down the path, the more little waterfalls you see. It's a lovely cool area, just relaxing. We stopped off at the Murrindindi Cascades, had a good walk down there and a look around there. Quite amazing the amount of water going through the place. Um, then we got back to the car, decided to have lunch and now we're back on the Murrindindi Road. We're heading up to Cheviot Tunnel now. We hang a right here just once we get onto the bitumen. Lots of little dams around here but there's still plenty of water in there. And here we are at the Cheviot Tunnel. Well, well, well. Absolutely incredible. Look at this. Wow, we. Here we go. We'll go through the tunnel here. Oh, we still got the old sleepers in the track too. Make it a bit rougher. 
And here we go. Wow, oh, what an incredible little tunnel. This is brilliant. Holy dooly, it's dark. Oh, no, that's better, sunglasses off. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Built in 1889, the Cheviot Tunnel was constructed using bricks made from clay from a nearby clay pit. The railway line was constructed through here to service the timber industry which was operating out of Murrindindi Forest. Little tramways were running from the forest up to the Cheviot station and then steam cranes would unload the timber onto the trains, taking it back to Melbourne. In 1972 the railway line was closed down and trucks came in and picked up the timber and took it back to Melbourne. The Murrindindi Forest area and the Cheviot Tunnel are fantastic places to visit. After a little bit of a rest and an RVT, it's time now to head back towards the Murrindindi Forest. One more four-wheel drive track and then we'll start heading home. Steep one, boy oh boy, would this be a ripper in the wet? Oh, just orange clay. It'd be so slippery. In second gear, low range here. The track's not too rocky, so I can keep a bit of momentum up. So here's our first real whoop de doo just here. Blimey, Teddy, it gets steeper. Up we go, wow, away. Is this a beauty? Holy dooly dooly! Oh, rough ledges! Oh. Is it really bad? The top's just here by the looks of things. Yeah, we're making the top it. It's not ever red yet, but it's going up. Roger. Gee, what a fantastic day we've had today! Oh. Nice cool area down by the Cascades, we decided to have lunch down there, it was just too hot out in the car park, and then on to Cheviot Tunnel. Great place that Cheviot Tunnel, built in the 1800s. All the soot still on the roof of the, of the tunnel, fantastic. They even had a bit of a play up the other end. And the GU, gee that's got a fantastic motor in it, and it's all set up really well for touring. That's a great machine that, I love it, I love it. Now, if you need any more information about anything on today's show, log on to the website. It's down there at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I keep on pointing every week down there. Sometimes I even forget to put it on the screen, but it's down there. And uh, send us an email if you want, because the trip report isn't up there at the moment. We lost it in a house move, so I can give you the track names. It's no drama at all. But for now, though, that's all we have time for. Now, as I get eaten by mozzies here. So have a great week. We'll catch you on the tracks. <laughs>